Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline, and today I have to give you guys the news. We kind of touched on this a little bit last week, so we've been kind of preparing for this in a way, but it's official, guys. I can't even speak correctly because I'm so sad. So Kevin Garnett has officially decided to throw in the towel and hang up the shoes. Uh, Chris Bosch has not been cleared for training camp. And Paul Pierce is saying that season 19 for him is the final chapter. So there's a lot to talk about this episode in regards to retirements, whether it's chosen or forced, as well as what some of our favorites that have retired already are adjusting to post basketball life with Tim Duncan and his Spurs. So there's a lot to talk about this week as well as um, LeBron and the Cavs and how the Cavs are preparing for this upcoming season. Coach Lou as well as what their um, majority owner Dan Gilbert has decided to do as kind of like a really nice thank you. But before we dive into all of that, I did want to say that it's kind of weird because And and I've kind of mentioned this these last few episodes for myself, um, but it's weird because we're seeing an era close. We're seeing a chapter close and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of weird because now we're seeing the faces of a lot of the franchises change and whether it's because due to retirement or due to this most recent free agency and the draft it's just really really weird to see how some of our um organizations that we love uh just change like things are just changing coaching staffs are changing uh extensions are being added contracts are ending people are getting waived there's just a lot going on so um first off I did want to touch on was Chris Bosch now Chris Bosch we had talked about him just this last week and we were discussing how he has been dealing with his potentially fatal blood clot that he's dealing with and so and the thing is this is this is I believe actually his second blood clot, excuse me, that he has been recovering from lately. And so it's a pretty big deal. And usually, typically, when people suffer from this condition, especially multiple, multiple, um, just multiple times, like, because sometimes you can go on um, blood thinners, but then when it occurs again, when it's a second occurrence of this situation of this disease, honestly, um, it, it is a career ender. And so last week we were discussing how he was um, not like, like, okay, so like they're in the talks, him and the Heat were in the talks of perhaps having him at least stick around for training camp if he was able to pass his physical, but they weren't quite sure as far as like the future, um, the entire season. And then we also discussed how um, his contract really may, um, you know, I like to play devil's advocate sometimes when it comes to certain situations and when it comes to money, especially, I think that money actually plays a lot. The politics, the money plays a much bigger role than um, people realize just in everyday life, just in things that we normally do. And especially in sports and especially with an organization that is the league of the NBA. So, um, 
and if you didn't if you want to go back and go listen to that definitely check that last episode out because i go into a little bit deeper discussion in regards to waiving chris bosh like the benefits for the heats organization versus um letting him play but anyways that kind of set aside he did not pass his physical so unfortunately he wasn't even able to um he wasn't cleared for training camp and we were really hoping that that would be his first step and so it's really sad because again like i said this is something that could not only like ending his career is devastating and having to take a step back from something that you love due to injury and especially not being able to have a say when you want to um you know hang up the nikes hang up the adidas the under armor whatever it is whatever shoes that you choose to wear um but it's also something that you know he has a family he has um a lot of children i think he has like five kids which is great so there's other things that this could potentially affect it could really you know it could end his life so um the heat did not clear him the train the uh doctors over there excuse me the staff the medical staff there did not clear him for training and as of actually most recently um this has been in the works. Bosch has also decided to fire his agent. So he will, he's still trying to, um, you know, renegotiate some things and try to figure things out and try to just any way stay involved and stay on the court. He's really trying very hard. His competitive side is really um, coming through right now that we're seeing that he really does not want to end his career like this. So um, if anything, he's going to have a new agent who's i don't know i don't know um because it's his it, it's not a matter of whether or not chris bosh is still a competitive player is could still make a difference it's more of the fact on whether or not his body whether it's safe for him to make a difference and to step back on that court so again um i don't know whether or not changing agents is going to fix that. I don't know because once, you know, like the medical staff, like again, we spoke about this in the last episode, being placed on perhaps long-term disability or being just declared permanently disabled. There is a lot of different things that could happen and that could potentially happen with this situation that no matter what agent he has, he might not be able to play. So um, that's that with Chris Bosch. Of course, he has been getting a lot of love and um, support from his fellow teammates, future, um, well, not future teammates, but current teammates and past teammates, as well as Dwayne Wade and LeBron James have been um, recently being interviewed because, you know, it was most recently we just had media day as well as the first day of training camp for the squads. So they have, of course, been asked about their friend and dear teammate Chris Bosch and how they feel in regards to how he is um the situation that he's dealing with. So, in speaking of LeBron, I did want to go into that in the Cavs. So, but the Heat, you know, okay, so before I jump into LeBron and the Cavs, you know, the Heat, it's going to be really interesting this season to see how they move forward because that, you know, that big three era that was Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, and Chris Bosh is, I, you know, it's gone. It's, it's over. It's closed, that era. So, you know, they're going to have to kind of move forward and kind of have a new face to the franchise because, you know, Dwayne is gone, Braun is gone, and unfortunately, it's looking like it's going to be a wrap for Chris Bosh when it comes to the NBA as far as being on the court. So, um, it's going to be really nice to see how the Heat switch over from that and I, I don't know I don't know we'll see I know that they're investing a lot into Hassan so we'll, we'll see how that goes and see how they adjust and adapt to this and so now like I said I want to go into what the Cavaliers are doing to say thank you as well as LeBron James and what him and coach Lou are looking at doing for this season to help keep him active and keep him in the game as well as talks of LeBron retiring so I don't know this has been the year of major contracts and major retirement um, declarations so keep it locked here you are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts basketball podcast I'm your host Pauline we will be right 
Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline. And so before the break, I discussed that I wanted to start and jump into the Cavaliers and their basically like their off season that they've had is since winning the finals this past spring and so it's kind of hard to have a bad summer when you end on such a high note and they continue to just build up and they've been continuing to just prepare for this upcoming season and not you know i i believe that the cavaliers have been enjoying the you know fruits of their labor but they're not letting it overshadow the fact that okay that that was last season and now we have to move on to the next season and now of course everybody's anticipating it to be the Warriors and the Cavaliers again and everybody's still kind of cranky about the super teams and all of that but whatever so um LeBron okay so I want to talk about LeBron first and I want to talk about the great act of just kindness and just thankfulness and great like I just think that what Dan Gilbert has decided to do is just really cool so I just cannot wait to get into that but whatever so um okay so LeBron has been um coach Lou has been interviewed because again they just had media day in the first you know few days of training camp are underway and so the teams are back into the swing of things and coach Lou has said that he wants to kind of lower the amount of minutes that Braun is going to be playing, especially during regular season. Now, it's not because there's any indifference. It's not because that they've had any arguments. It's not because of anything. Honestly, it's just to help prepare the team and all of them, actually, and not just LeBron. And he did mention in the interview that it's not just going to be LeBron that he is going to, you know, have you know track minutes and try to decide on what is a great because of course you want key factor players like that such as LeBron to who are really high impact players to get a lot of time to impact the games in the ways that they do but at the same time you don't want that burnout and we always talk about that that playoffs are um, a time when yes you have to give it your all yes you have to play very competitively and yes you have to play every game as if it is your last because it potentially could be but it also depends on how healthy your players are going into that postseason and if the players bodies can keep up with it and if the players um, like is everybody on your team able to play you know there's a lot of times when you have key players that just cannot play because due to injury whether they suffered an injury during regular season or early on in the postseason and it's like perhaps if I would have had my main guy in there and he wasn't a exhausted b worn down or c just straight out sidelined that we could have made a really good run in the postseason and so that's what the Cavaliers are talking about doing especially with LeBron because now LeBron he um last season was like the lowest like average of playing time that he had so he didn't play too much as far as what his normal production is and but of course it did jump up during the playoffs because they they needed him more during that time and now if you remember last season he took like a two-week break to kind of recover and to just let his body rest and so I think what they're trying to do is make sure to like avoid just not having him completely and just scaling back on the time that he's playing throughout the regular season and you know they they do a really good job like the trainers and the staff that they have on these teams do a really good job to make sure that players are not overdoing it and that they're not going to hurt themselves because one you know you need them on the court. And so that's that with LeBron and Coach Ty. So we might be actually seeing less of LeBron on the court. 
but not less of his competitiveness and his athleticism, just a lot less time until we get to the playoff season where I know that he's going to, you know, do his thing and try to again get his team back to back championships. And so, and if we, you know, LeBron has been in the league for 14 years, he's a 14 year veteran. So this is, um, starting he's you know I don't honestly I don't think LeBron's old I really don't I don't think that he's old in comparison to one just us common folk or in the arena of basketball I I don't think he's old at all I think that he does have a few more years left in him but um, he's actually been talking about retiring and um not he okay so he hasn't pulled a Paul Pierce now Paul Pierce has decided that like I said this upcoming season 2016-2017 is his last season and that he's retiring after that which again is really really sad because it's like that wave of athletes is retiring and so that is an era, like a chapter in the NBA that is closing. And LeBron has mentioned in his uh, recent interview that he feels that his gen- like his era now is getting old and that they're the next wave to kind of start their retirement and things like that. So it's going to be interesting. I-, I don't know. I don't know how long LeBron, he hasn't said really, oh, I want to play x amount of years oh i want to you know they were asking him is there a certain amount of championships that he wants to win before hanging it up like it's not about that he was saying there's no um specific number or goal that he's trying to reach it's just you know time i guess and just until he can't do what he does anymore i'm supposing so um it's just really weird because it's weird to think that now lebron is considering himself a veteran okay well we know he's a veteran in the game because you know 14 years in the game that puts you at veteran status compared to a lot of these guys that are coming up now but what i mean is like okay so you know kevin garnett paul pierce vince carter to me those are the veterans in the game right now now they're starting to retire and who knows when vince carter is gonna decide who who knows (laughs) vince carter is gonna stay in for quite a while and that is probably when i will be really sad is when he decides to hang it up but um you know it's just weird to think because at one time those were the young guys and those were the up and coming guys and things like that and they were trying to be like the guys that they looked up to and now they're deciding it's almost time to wrap it up. So that's just really, really weird to me to hear that. And especially, again, growing up watching these guys and seeing guys in my mind that are the young players saying that they're getting too old and that it's almost time to lace it up. So one last time. So it's just really weird. But um, speaking of the Cavaliers and LeBron James, like I said, so I was really excited to share this particular bit of news in regards to the Cavs. So Cavs owner Dan Gilbert, he's a majority owner, has decided that basically every employee is going to receive a championship ring in, you know, memory of the historic season that the Cavaliers just closed. And so over there's gonna be more than a thousand full and part-time employees so like people like ticket takers and ushers and people that work at the concession stands and security guards police officers are saying people that do a lot to help make the arena run and make the entire organization run are gonna get rings and I just think it was really cool because you know we talk about like um like the coaching staffs getting rings and things like that but then it's just I just thought it was a really nice gesture to extend it out to even more of that like Cavalier family and to appreciate what it is that they do in order to help make these home games especially run and to make the entire fan experience that of a championship team so i just thought that was really cool and it's going to be over it's worth um you know to do all of that of course takes money and things like that but uh you know when you're a champ what is money uh (laughs) so he he, they the cavaliers organization is going to be spending over a million dollars to you know outfit their squad 
with rings. Now, it's not going to be the exact ring, of course, that's going to be on, you know, LeBron and Kyrie and all of that, because those are um, specific just to the players and that's that squad but the extended squad you know they're gonna have something to actually show off which I just think is actually really really cool and you know people always say don't forget about the little people when you get big and I just think that this is a really good example of a of a city of a town of a um excuse me of an organization really appreciating the people the little people and not forgetting them when they want to ring because you know these are people some of these people probably have been working for them for many many years even when they were not all that great so um it's just really nice that they're recognizing them and um it, i just thought that that was really really cool but on the flip side of all of that it has not been confirmed nobody has confirmed said yes or has said no on whether or not former coach coach blatt is going to get one and whether or not vera Jow, who was actually um traded to the warriors mid-season and you know actually played against the Cavs in the finals so it's not been said yes or no whether or not that they will get a ring now that was kind of something that we talked about that Vera Jow could potentially get a ring regardless of who won because you know supposedly he has been offered to get a ring it's just up to him to decline that offer but I don't know it hasn't been confirmed I haven't really seen that from a real reliable source or anything like that so we'll see what happens with that maybe they will get one maybe they won't I don't know I don't know what you guys think you guys can hit me up on twitter at gsmc underscore basketball and tell me does Vera Jow you know does he deserve a ring does Blatt deserve a ring do they not deserve it because like you know they helped get them to that postseason point but then they weren't there during that you know seven game series so I don't know I, I'm kind of torn with this one this one I really don't know um I don't know if I would even want a ring like if I was very Jow, would I really want a ring now that I'm with my new squad would I want a ring but then I don't know I really don't know about this one I it's nice like those rings are beautiful if you've never seen a championship ring see I got to see a championship ring for a um like the big west conference their basketball men's basketball when you re win that conference that was for like a smaller conference you know like mid-major like this is like nba so i can't even imagine how beautiful those rings are up close and actually fitted on your finger so i don't know i don't know if i was very jail whether or not i would want one of those i i don't know see my loyalty when, when i i think that when you're on a, a new team your full loyalty should go to that new team that you're on um so i don't know but then you did he I mean he was with them all the way till February so I mean that's a pretty long time it wasn't like he skipped out you know he was part of that um process for a very long time all last season so I don't know I really don't know so let me know on Twitter at GSMC underscore basketball if you have an opinion on whether or not Vera Jow should get one and why he should get one or should he even accept it if they offer it to him I don't know I guess you could like just give it back I guess or donate it or auction and donate the money i don't know i don't know so um we actually have to take it to a quick break you're listening to the golden state media concepts basketball podcast i'm your host pauline we will be right back tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching hey! the golden state media concepts podcast network is here nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage from news sports music fashion cooking entertainment fantasy football and so much more so stop lurking around and go straight out to the golden state media concepts podcast network guaranteed to fill that podcast itch whatever it may be
Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline, and we are getting ready to wrap up this episode. And I did mention at the very beginning that this episode was going to be kind of like talks about people who are retiring, deciding to retire, whether they want to or not, whether they're forced to. So, um, now, Tim Duncan, we already knew he announced his retirement earlier in this offseason. So we already knew that it was going to be different for the Spurs. But we also all knew and were not surprised to know that Tim has kind of like a standing invitation with the Spurs because he's been a fixture, not only in the NBA, but a fixture, a fixture, excuse me, in within the Spurs organization. Like they dedicated July 21st to be Tim Duncan day. Um, and just to celebrate what he has done for that community and for that organization. He's just such a great guy, like a class act, a class A act. So anyways, um, now Tim Duncan has a really good relationship with coach pop and we saw that when coach was talking about tim duncan's retirement decision and how he actually got pretty emotional on live tv when um discussing that situation which was so so nice because it's always nice when um anybody has a good relationship with their boss or organization especially when you give so much of your time it's just really nice to be honored right so It's funny because training camp again, I've already said this multiple times, but it has started this week and Tim was a part of it and he watched some things. He gave some advice on some things and he, so he isn't officially like a coach or anything. So Pop did say that there's no room for him as of yet on the bench during games, but of course there will always be room for him in any other capacity that he wants. And right now they are saying that they're kind of just trying to focus on him getting adjusted to post basketball life as far as not being a player, but that he, um, they want him to be a part of the practice. They want him to be part of training camp. They want his leadership and that they've even said that he's like the coach of whatever it's whatever he feels like where he wants to slip in that they're not telling him oh he has to just be over the bigs or oh he has to be over the rookies or the new people now mind you the spurs have brought on 12 new people to their 20-man roster so they're basically all newbies so it's not like Duncan is just in charge in charge excuse me of the newcomers to the team it's not like he is you know he doesn't have to Fit. They don't have a box. And I just think that that just, again, is another testament to the kind of relationship that they have had with him and the relationship that he has with the organization that they're giving him his own, just, they're just kind of like creating a role for him. They're just allowing him to fit in seamlessly. And I think it's going to be a great thing. I think that the Spurs are going to have, um, especially all those newcomers and the, the bigs especially are going to get a lot of good advice from him they're going to get a good literally a great role model an example of what the spurs organization believes in and what they value and that you know if you i I wouldn't i wouldn't be you know i i would go as far as to say that a model player that if they follow that kind of like template they could have a really long and successful career right there and that they never have to move and that they can be a part of that community and never and kind of like a job security type thing. I don't know. I would go as far as to say that too. So um, that is with Tim Duncan and the Spurs. Again, um, Paul Pierce has decided to, and I'm wondering how Paul Pierce is going to do this because you know how like A-Rod kind of had like that farewell tour and so i'm wondering on whether or not paul pierce is gonna do something like that i don't know does he deserve something like that because you know a rod and i know that's like a whole different sport and that's not part of the basketball podcast but that's just like an example and then like kobe's i mean kobe kind of did it and i was really hoping that timmy would stay one more year so that we can kind of give him a farewell tour because i think Tim Duncan is the kind of guy that no matter what city he would have been playing in, people would have shown him mad love. Like he would have just got love everywhere that he went. So I'm wondering if Paul Pierce now, Paul Pierce 
I, I don't know. Would he get that kind of love? doing a farewell tour. I don't know. I guess we'll see how people react and how fans react in the different cities that he's going to go um, this last season, his 19th season. Uh, Kobe, he, I kind of like how he played on the whole, like the player, like he, you know, like everybody loves to hate him and that he's the one player that everybody everywhere loves to hate unless you're a huge Laker fan. So, I mean, we'll see the reception that Paul Pierce receives as he goes around in this last season. Again, I think there's going to be a lot of nostalgic moments. Kevin Garnett, he passed up the opportunity to have a farewell tour. I think I, I would, I, I think that Kevin Garnett would get a nice little farewell. You know, you can't, you can't be mad at a man that fights. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but um, you know, that has that aggressive it's kind of changing the nba is kind of changing i know everybody says oh that nba is getting soft now but you know kevin garnett kind of represents to me um a player that played with all heart and all passion you know um and i think i think he would have got a good farewell tour another player that you know you can't you can't you can't talk down on his passion for the game that's for sure so um especially you know i can just i just love that he came back and put on a timberwolves jersey i just think that that's so cool to just come back home type of a thing so um that's actually going to do it for this episode of the golden state media concepts basketball podcast i'm your host pauline and it's kind of sad that all of these players again I, I don't know i'm getting sad this off season at first i was like whoa because all the new contracts that were opening up and all the um you know with the new salary cap i was like wow maybe i need to get into the nba because everybody's getting paid you know i was thinking maybe my brother should go outside and shoot some hoops so that we can get them uh you know get them a contract since they were just handing them out like pokemon cards but then now i'm getting kind of sad as this off season comes to a close and you know training camp starts because everybody's hanging them up i don't know it's weird it's really really weird so um but like i said we're gonna wrap up this episode you can listen to this episode again as well as past episodes and future episodes on our podcast network website that's gsmcpodcast.com as well as on itunes google play soundcloud and stitcher i will talk to you next time have fun enjoy your whatever it is that you're doing and you know go shoot some hoops today <laughs> bye you've been listening to the golden state media concepts basketball podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program